Hi everyone, I'm Magic Dave, and this is Sapiens. Um, so yeah, it's been a little while for, since my last video. I think I start every video saying that, but um, this time has been even longer than normal, and that's because I decided to basically drop everything and port the whole um, game over from OpenGL to Vulkan. Um, so my renderer is now using solely uh, Vulkan, which is sort of the new new. Um, new future I guess for, for graphics APIs or for the sort of cross-platform open source um, graphics APIs so um, yeah I thought in this video um, now that I've finally got something actually rendering um, I would talk about why I did that and how it went and um, and yeah um, so what triggered this was that I wanted to get more trees rendering and as you can see I do have a few more trees um, so <laughs> that worked out um, but I could have probably done that in OpenGL um, but it was just I, I needed to do a little bit of work um, just uh, it, it's using a technique called just instancing which is fairly simple but um, yeah I just thought if I'm going to do that I need to finally make a decision about whether I'm going to move APIs or stick with OpenGL because there was no point in doing it in OpenGL if I was just going to then um, move to Vulkan. So I sort of gave it a bit of thought and decided um, after I sort of did a bit of research and things that actually it is what I wanted to do. Um, so I dived in. Um, so I guess part of what made me do this as well was that um, Apple has deprecated um, OpenGL and so they've basically said that op OpenGL doesn't have a future um, with Apple and so if you want to continue to develop for Mac and iOS then you need to switch to using Metal um, and Vulkan does actually work um, with a layer that, that runs over Metal so that sort of gave, gave me some options there. Um, currently it's not, I haven't actually got it working um, on the Mac but that's because I'm waiting for an extent, uh, well for an update to the latest um, support for Vulkan so um, I think it'll work so I think that's going to give me that option to support the Mac again. Um, and I guess for me personally also um, switching to Vulkan made sense because it, it's a good, it would be a good learning experience and a good way of keeping my knowledge kind of current. Um, you know, there's no point in hanging on to old technology that's that's going out the door. So um, I decided that it was a good good thing for me to do um, for my own experience. Um, and I also hoped that it would put, would improve performance. Um, so I guess yeah, from what I read, I wasn't that hopeful. I sort of thought basically that I'd after porting to Vulkan, I would end up with roughly the same frame rate, and then perhaps it would open up some opportunities for me to do some further optimizations um, a bit easier. Uh, but actually, I was kind of blown away. I mean, I did um, I did change, like, I guess going through this process meant that I looked at every single bit of my graphics code and rewrote it. Um, and so I was able to optimize things as I went a little bit. Um, but also... Um, yeah, just I think just in general, maybe I was doing some silly things um, in OpenGL or whatever, but I actually saw immediately with very little effort um, double the frame rate um, on my graphics card here. So, so yeah, uh, that was just that blew me away, and it just already I could render sort of you know double the trees or more um, without really doing much. Uh, so that was good. But yeah, so that was sort of my reasoning for actually doing this. Um, I didn't really know how it would go, but um, overall, yeah, it took me about, I guess, five or six weeks of full-time work um, to do this port. Um, that was about what I expected, um, and yeah, it was challenging, um, definitely. Um, and yeah, a lot of that was just trying to trying to figure out how to use the new API and also figuring out, I guess... Um, you know, surprisingly perhaps just figuring out how to design my own code like how to go from having a shader class that that was for you know designed for OpenGL to having um, pipeline sort of objects and things which just are a little bit different so yeah but yeah I think overall um, the benefits far outweigh any kind of negatives and, and surprises that I that, that I found um, one thing that's definitely the case is that I'm, I'm better able to actually design um, things to be more performant and um, it's just it's just easier to sort of understand what is going on um, the errors that are reported and the and the sort of um, validation layers that, that um, 
Vulcan offers are just far superior to what, what we had available to debug problems in OpenGL. And so I think some of the more advanced features that I've implemented since and also more advanced features that I'll continue to sort of add um, are going to be a lot easier than it would have been with OpenGL. Um, often in OpenGL you'd just add some new thing and it just wouldn't work and you'd just not have any way of knowing why and you'd just have to try random things until eventually it came right, <laughs> which is not much fun. Uh, but with Vulkan, you nearly always um, get some message telling you pretty much exactly what you're doing wrong. So, you know, it's, it's a total transformation as far as, um, you know, my ability to, to add new things. Um, I guess also the community is, is more active and um, it's just generally a more exciting kind of interesting um, interesting place to, to be a part of. So, um, so that's good. It feels like it's, it's a bit more exciting. Okay, so as I said, the um, one of the main reasons that I decided to do this was to render more trees. Um, and so, yeah, I am now able to render more trees. I'll be able to render more than this um, as well. But um, also, I have, um, as a result of that, been able to finally add wind. Um, before, that, I didn't really have the information available at each vertex to be able to move, the, move them around. Uh, whereas now it's it's all just there. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, that's come out quite um, quite nice. I really like the added kind of atmosphere that it provides. Um, you can also see that the grass is um, swaying in the wind, and you can actually see little sort of waves of wind going, little gusts going through. Um, and that's because uh, I decided to work on the water as well and finally sort out what my wave algorithms were doing. Um, before it was using the 3D position in the world to look up uh, well, just as inputs into like the sine, sine functions basically. Um, but the problem was that you know the world's a sphere and so sometimes waves would be coming out of the ground and going up and sometimes it'd be going you know, all sorts of different directions and in fact the way that I was bouncing off my um, my normals to do the reflections was probably completely incorrect and it, it looked very wrong at times. Um, so I've figured all that out. I've learned enough about matrix maths <laughs> in the past year or two to actually do it properly. Um, whereas before I don't think I really understood what I was doing. So, um, so the waves are now sort of physically accurate and I just use that same code to come to, to distort um, the grass or a variation of it. So um, yeah, waves move through. It's all based on sine curves and stuff. And it's also driving the um, tree leaves as well. So I'm very pleased with how that's looking. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the video, but uh, there's no multi-sampling at the moment, so it's all a bit pixely in the distances and stuff. Um, I've got a way to fix that, so that's that's just on the to-do list. So when I was work working on the water, I wanted to really just get it right, um, and I've not, you know, I've always had various artifacts that I haven't been happy with, and um, you know, I've sort of had it looking all sorts of different states along the way. Um, but I think I've finally nailed it. Um, I'm, you know, I mean, obviously it's not perfect, but I think it's good enough now that, you know, with the transparency, being able to see a bit of the seabed, um, and yeah, with the reflections, um, I'm now rendering reflections into their own buffer. Um, before I was using the, the um, image-based lighting texture, um, so yeah, now they're actually physically correct. So um, you know, if you looked down, you can actually see that you're looking up at the trees, whereas before it was just sort of a hack and it all broke down if you sort of had objects too close to the water and things. Um, and you can actually do this, whereas before you would see a reflection of the tree in the water behind it, whereas now there's no problems with that. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy to have that all kind of working locked down, um, and I think it looks a lot better. Um, and aside from that, uh, I guess there hasn't been a lot of new changes. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, the majority of my work has just been getting it working in Vulkan. Um, now that it's all kind of done, I can actually get back to um, you know gameplay and and things like that. Um, I did do a couple of things before I did Vulkan I just worked on getting all the text and stuff to scale so it's all resolution independent now um, it'll actually load up high resolution font files if this if the text is um, expanded up um, blown up and stuff uh, it's not it's not perfect but it's um, it's working quite well so yeah that was a good 
thing to get done. Um, and let me just try to find some people. <laughs> okay, I've finally found some people. I really need to make it so that um, tribes are marked on the map but better than they are. I'd spend half my time looking for people. Um, but anyway, so the people, um, I just made it so that they will now gather resources that they need um, from places like if, if they need branches, then they'll go and gather them from, um, from nearby trees. Um, so, I don't know, let's make a branch stockpile. Um, and, oh, we're not actually leading this tribe yet, so I'll just uh, do this. Um, so, no, I guess they'll probably just find, um, find branches lying around. But maybe these guys, one of them might be heading towards these trees. Yeah, so um, I thought that, that would be kind of a good thing. They're still all overlapping, and yeah. But um, what's interesting about it though is that now that I've done that, when they get hungry, they actually go and pick apples. And so I was playing around with it, and um, I just noticed that there was another random guy had come over and started picking apples. Um, so my tribe was sort of busy doing whatever, and then there's another tribe. Um, sort of encroaching on their territory and stealing their food and I thought that was quite an interesting little sort of thing that came out of just that simple thing of just giving them a little bit of intelligence um, and I'm quite excited about the future of that. Um, what's also interesting is that when I've been debugging and just testing stuff you know the world's kind of gone on around me and I haven't really been paying attention but then suddenly I'll notice that there'll just be like bands of, of people just just walking along and just gathering all the the apples and stuff and they all sort of end up coming together because the the trees will all sort of be in certain regions and they all end up just sort of following each other naturally and I just thought that's kind of amazing like um, I don't know just the simple mechanic how, how and what an impact it can have and it, it could even be a way forward for um, Oh, the server's crashed. <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah, it could even be a way forward for the um, the animals and stuff. Just just the fact that if they were just looking for food, uh, that would probably be enough. Okay, so the one other thing that I wanted to show you was the um, the change. You might have noticed already that to using basically hexagon um, hexagon tile types. Now, what's actually happening is that I'm assigning each vertex. A type instead of each triangle and I did that because it would be quite a nice optimization but also that it made more sense because there was always a problem when you're digging a face and it modified the three vertices like what if the if the each if the neighboring faces were different types what should it give you you know so now it's quite obvious that if um let's, let me just show you so if I'm going to dig this, then I'll get sand. If I'm going to get that, dig that, then I'll get dirt. And it's just nice and clear. And it also looks a lot more organic as far as um, you know the edges between tiles go. So I think it's a visual improvement. Um, yeah, but I, I was playing around with trying to get... It's now probably even harder to know what the actual underlying geography is. You know, the, the sort of because you're not dealing with triangles it's it's quite tricky to know what the slope is so I was playing with this um, interface I'm not happy with this yet um, so yeah but I mean I thought it I quite liked it I thought it was quite sort of looked quite nice with the the those lines trying to show you the slope but I think it's confusing because you're trying to do an action and it's showing you something else but anyway I'll keep messing around with that um, so yeah, that's about it for this video, I think. Um, yeah, not a huge amount to show off um, other than just sort of the visuals. Um, and yeah, obviously I've got some issues with them. Oh yeah, they've got hungry and come over and pick some apples. Um, yeah, there's been a huge number of tweaks to, to the graphics and things. So um, yeah, overall, I'm quite happy with um, how it's looking. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully uh, I'll get heaps of gameplay stuff done in the next month and actually have um, more of a game to show you. Um, although, as normally happens, I get distracted quite easily. And who knows, maybe it'll just look even nicer next time. But um, yeah, until then, we'll catch you next time.